Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at init blocks in Kotlin. So I'm going to create a project by a slightly different method to usual. I've created an empty project and I'm going to right click the source folder and go to new Kotlin class slash file. And with class selected, I'm going to type person with a capital P and I'm going to hit return. That creates a file for me called person.kt. Let's just click add on this just to get rid of it. Now notice I give the class a uppercase first letter and that exists in a file called person.kt which also has an uppercase first letter. And this is the convention in Kotlin. We usually put classes in their own files. The file has the same name as the class and the class has an uppercase first letter. Now I could actually put my main function in a different file if I wanted to. And I usually would, but in this case, for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to just create a main function down here in the same file. Now let's give person a property. The easiest way to do that is to use the primary constructor. So we have round brackets here, and let's say val name of type string. So now I can create a person object. Let's call this val person equals person, and we'll supply the name Bob. So for example, if we have a method called speak, in there we could say print line, hello, I'm dollar name. And we could call that down here, person.speak. Let's run it. And we can see it says, hello, I'm Bob. Now let's imagine I decide that for some reason I want the name to be uppercased. The primary constructor can't contain any code, so it doesn't give me any opportunity for uppercasing this name. But as we've seen, there is a way to do that. I can declare the property name down here, typically above any methods. So let's say val name, which could be of type string. And I need to get rid of the val keyword here this effectively becomes just a variable as if we were passing it to a function. And I can set that equal to name dot uppercase. And now what happens is this is the property and it's going to get initialized from this variable, which is going to be set to uppercase. So when we run it, we get hello, I'm Bob in uppercase. And we've seen all of this before, but what I want to show you now is how we can use init blocks to add code to our class that will automatically run every time we create an object from the class. So here, for example, I could write init and I need a pair of curly brackets. Let's try running just a print line statement in there. So I'm going to say print line. I write init one colon and let's output the value of name. Let's try to do it. So I'm going to write name here. Does that actually work? Let's run. So you can see that by adding this init block, the code within it, however many lines of code I put in there, actually run when I create an object. So every time I create an object from person, the code in this init block now is going to run. Now I've been calling this the primary constructor, but another way of looking at it is that init blocks become part of the primary constructor. So we've got this simple version of the primary constructor. We can even put val there and create a property there, but that doesn't contain any code. If we want to add code in to the primary constructor, we use init blocks. And you can see that the name that has been output is not uppercased. So we're not outputting this property. We're actually outputting this variable here. Let's add another init block. We're going to put it after I've initialized the property and let's see what happens then. So this is going to run actually in order. We're going to first run the primary constructor here, this actual bit of it. Then we're going to run this, then we're running this, and then we're running this. Let's have a look. So you can see the dollar name even here after I've initialized the property 
still refers to this variable because it's still coming out in lowercase. Actually, I meant to call that init2, but you can see what's happening, I think. Let's just rerun it. So even when we do init2, we're still referring to this variable and not to this property. However, there is a way to explicitly refer to the property and not the variable. To do that, I'm going to have to use a little bit of code. So I'm going to put curly brackets around the code that I'm going to use here. And in there, I'm going to change name to this.name in this second init block. And if I run that, we now find that init2 does refer to the property and not to this variable. What is this? Well, we're going to take a closer look at it in the next video. But for now, it is just worth trying this out if you're new to this, especially. We can't actually do that up here. Let's try it. If we try to do that, we get red underlining indicating an error and it says variable name must be initialized. And that's because the compiler is reading down from top to bottom. And by the time it gets to here, it hasn't seen this yet. So this name property doesn't exist. The only thing that does exist called name is this variable at this point. But once we've created the property, we can then refer to it using this. Do check out my courses on caveofprogramming.com. I've got some free courses on there as well as premium courses. And I've got a new blog where you can find some videos about Rust if you're interested in that. And that's at blog caveofprogramming.com. Links in the description. That's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding.